In Math 30-1 today, we're looking at topic 10.2, the product quotient of functions. To combine two functions, f of x and g of x, you multiply and divide as follows. h of x is simply going to be f of x times g of x, or f times g of x is how it's written. And the quotient of functions, f of x divided by g of x, is written as f divided by g of x. The domain of a product of functions is the domain common to the original functions. However, the domain of a quotient of functions must take into consideration that division by zero is going to be undefined. So the domain of a quotient h of x, which is f of x divided by g of x, is going to be further restricted for values where x, for values of x where g of x is going to equal zero. Let's consider f of x to equal the root of x minus 1 and g of x is equal to x minus 2. Here we're going to say that the domain of the function f of x is all x such that x is greater than or equal to 1 and x can be any real number. The domain of that function uh, of g of x is going to be x is any real number. So the domain of f times g of x is x is greater than or equal to 1. Well, the domain of f divided by g of x is x is going to be greater than or equal to 1, but it's also going to include the point where x cannot equal 2. That's where we're coming from. In example 1, we're going to determine the product of functions. If f and x is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 5, and a second function, g of x, is 3x minus 4, then h of x has to be f times g of x. To find h of x, we're going to have to multiply f times g of x. That means x plus 2 squared minus 5 has to be multiplied by 3x minus 4. You're going to expand and simplify the first bracket, clean it up, and then get your result and multiply it by the second bracket, which in the end is going to leave us with 3x cubed plus 18x squared minus 19x plus 4. f at x equals x plus 2 squared minus 5 has a domain of x as any real number g of x, 3x minus 4, also has a domain of x as any real number. Therefore, the composite function, h of x, is going to have the domain of x as any real number and a range of y as to be, y can be any real number. In example 2, we're going to determine the quotient of functions. This time we're dividing. If you determine the equation of the function h of x is g divided by f at x, then we want to sketch the graphs of all three on the same set of axes and to state the domain. Well, h of x, you know, is g divided by f at x, which is 2x plus 6 divided by x squared plus x minus 6. Now we have to look. Can I factor this? Yes, I can. 2x plus 6 can factor into 2 times x plus 3 if I take out the GCF. And the bottom can be factored into two binomials, x plus 3 times x minus 2. Now what we can do is cancel the x plus 3s, and our graph is going to simplify to be 2 over x minus 2. However, x cannot equal 2, or it cannot equal negative 3. Even though we've cancelled the, the x plus 3 from both the numerator and the denominator, it is still going to remain because it's a part of our original. So now when you graph it, you're going to notice that our composite function, h of x in dark, is going to be have an asymptote where x is equal to 2. There will be a, a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 2. There is also going to be a point of discontinuity where x is equal to negative 3. And that's shown up as the hole in the graph. 
So we can say that the domain of h of x, x cannot equal 2, that's our asymptote, x cannot equal negative 3, that's our whole. And that's how officially we're going to write it. And the range from this, we're going to notice that there is a horizontal asymptote where y is equal to 0. And so you're going to say that y cannot equal 0 or the point negative 2 over 5. But y can be any other real number. In example 3, we're looking at applications of products and quotients of functions. A local hockey team owner would like to boost fan support for the games. He decides to reduce ticket prices, t in dollars. According to the function, t is a function of g, is equal to 10 minus 0.1g, where g represents the game number. To further increase fan support, he decides to randomly give away noisemakers. The number n in hundreds of noisemakers can be modeled by the function n as a function of g is 2 minus 0.05g. The community fan base is small, but the owner notices that since the incentives were put in place, attendance a in hundreds can be modeled by a as a function of g equals 8 plus 0.2g. Determine r of g such that it's going to equal t of g times a of g algebraically and explain what it represents. Well, here we go. r of g is equal to t of g times a of g and that is going to be if we multiply it and simplify it we're going to get this function. And what that means is You multiply the ticket price by the attendance and you'll notice that you're going to maximize your ticket price and attendance when your ticket price is or game 30 sorry for game 30 P of G now for part B is going to be n of g divided by a of g and we're going to graph to evaluate that one and you're going to notice that you're going to get a um, point of 0 0.20 or approximately 20% chance of receiving a free noisemaker 